Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here again with another video. Uh, today going to be talking about what I think will end up being one of the most important stories of 2020 from a tech uh, perspective. I want to talk about the Twitter hack that happened recently. I'm sure you read something about it. But what's interesting is it seems to have dropped out of the news cycle pretty fucking quickly. Uh, and I would wager, you know, having done videos in the past that show, there is this back channel between journalists and their very good friends over at Twitter uh, that probably this is a little bit of quid pro quo that we're not talking about something that is so incredibly significant. Now, you must have heard a little bit about it. I'm going to try and give you the complete rundown. So I'll make this as quick as I can, but it might run a little bit longer than some of my other videos on, on this type of uh, topic. But I just want to say first off that this is uh, like just an incredible security breach. This is not like, you know, oh, someone's database got leaked and maybe change your password. This proves things that we uh, have kind of suspected about Twitter for a while. And on, uh, on top of that, it also shows that actually there's so many staff members that have a frightening level of access to your account and can bypass, you know, two-factor authorization. They can pretty much do whatever they want. And it's not reserved for people in the upper echelons of the company. It seems that just average Joe Twitter employees could have had, can basically gain access to and take over verified accounts which include big tech companies, politicians, and think of the ramifications of that. Like what you could do, you could like essentially tweet out that warrior you know, from Donald Trump's uh, account bombing North Korea today. Or it's it's unbelievable that this level of sort of uh, oversight. Uh, on part of Twitter has kind of just been in place that ah, this will be fine. So let, let, let's get into it. This is where it started. Um, a, a week ago, these uh, random tweets or seemingly random tweets started coming out from big accounts and it was related to Bitcoin. You can see here's one from Apple, but this went out from like Barack Obama's account, Biden's account, Elon Musk's account. And uh, the tweet simply said the same thing in all instances. It said, we are giving back to our community. We support Bitcoin and we believe you should too. All Bitcoin sent to our address below will be sent back to you doubled. There's the Bitcoin uh, address. And this is only going on for the next 30 minutes. So what happened was, I mean, in in incredibly, some people fell for this. I mean, if I saw something like that, the first thing I would think is, well, that's a fucking scam. I don't care if it's coming from an Apple account. It, 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 accounts can be compromised, can't but um, some people did fall for it. I think in total, they raised, you know, um, I think it was sixty thousand dollars, something like that, uh, in Bitcoin worth of Bitcoin. Uh, but as you're going to see, there, there's way more of this story than meets the eye. This wasn't uh, just a, a group of hackers that gained access to a few accounts. Uh, this was a, a sort of socially engineered plan, and it might run a little bit deeper than just them coming away with the, with Bitcoin. In fact, my s suspicions are the Bitcoin was almost an afterthought and wasn't really what they were there for uh, in its entirety. But we'll we'll get to that in a second. Now, it was covered by Vice. They were one of the few publications, actually, to their credit, that picked up this story and did their own investigating and ran with it in, in a way that uh, I think does justice to the gravity of the situation. Um, but you can see here, this was uh, by Joseph Cox over at Vice, a Twitter insider was responsible for a wave of high-profile account takeovers on Wednesday, according to leaked screenshots obtained by Motherboard and two sources who took over accounts. On Wednesday, a spike of high-profile accounts, including those of Joe Biden, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Barack Obama, Uber, and Apple, tweeted cryptocurrency scams in an apparent hack. Uh, we used a rep that literally done all the work for us, one of the sources told Motherboard. The second source added they paid the Twitter insider. Motherboard granted the source's anonymity to speak candidly about the security incident. A Twitter spokesperson told Motherboard that the company is still investigating whether the employee hijacked the accounts themselves or gave hackers access to the tool um so first just let that sort of 
sit with you a little bit that basically hackers were able to get friendly with a twitter employee and then as it so transpires for the like i think the low low cost of like two thousand dollars gain access to an account that can essentially take over any other account now what's also interesting is this this story was breaking twitter were deleting people sharing images of the panel that they used and here it is uh and uh, actually i i think what i'll do is i'll bring up um a bigger version of that uh, it might be uh might be good so you can get a closer look at what we're dealing with but you're gonna immediately notice uh a few things on the panel right that this is um something that looks that tw twitter can basically have manipulative capabilities uh and have for a long long time this has been discussed in congress as to whether or not they've had these tools for a while and whether or not they use them to suppress conservatives make a you know make make of what they said to congress that you will that they're a, a, a non a partisan platform but let's just have a look at what this what the, what the panel can actually do so first of all over on the left side it tells you obviously basic stuff you would expect like when you joined whether you're uh, suspended whether you've been perm suspended bounced not too sure what that means i think that's been a, t a topic of a, a much uh, discussion and protected which i guess rather than means it's protected by twitter from any action as some people erroneously state and i think it just means that they've gone into protected mode um and you can see as well you know it's got some vital statistics about the account this is uh, uh, where it gets interesting on the right side. So we see again, bounced, inactive. I don't know what would make these flag necessarily. But when you come down here, it has compromised, which I, I don't really know how you would be able to sort of independently assess that uh, 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 like algorithmically. But then it also says trends blacklist and search blacklist and read only so let's talk about the the blacklist capabilities now it's been often discussed uh by people who believe that they're having their tweets suppressed and everything that twitter would do certain things like they remove you from a search bar so when you type in your name you don't show up you have to click directly on the link so it's essentially a shadow bam uh then there's the trends blacklist now trending is the most manipulated astroturfed load of shit i've ever seen uh, in, in social media with maybe the exception of reddit which nothing is real on reddit anymore so the search blacklist is definitely a real thing that's definitely gone on i've known many people many you know uh some not so popular figures and not so popular journalists that have been prevented from being sh like showing up in a search uh this appears to be a setting that twitter can turn on and off because think about it logically even if this was just letting you know whether or not that status was applied to the account and not a button to make that status applied to the account the fact that there is a label for it means that label can be applied to the account now i remember when twitter interviewed jack dorsey uh, ceo of twitter uh, and, and he said that they had to basically give the mayor culpa they'd said for months in advance that they don't do shadow bans and then it turned out that yes they actually were applying ban uh, a shadow ban of this nature to like six hundred thousand accounts they said it was put in place by an algorithm that had detected neg negative behavior on the accounts negative behavior seems to be just tweeting anything that isn't sort of like far left ideologue propaganda it's a very low threshold it seems to get put into the gulag on twitter these days um but uh the what the trends blacklist so now you can essentially prevent people from ever trending no matter how popular their tweet is and look we know this goes on in big tech we know that what is trending is not what is trending for example we have seen um the feminist frequency uh, uh podcast which had like about three thousand people tweeting about it like ever I, I might even be too generous with that number um and yet it trended on twitter meanwhile we've we've seen 
huge happenings, including this hack which didn't trend at the time it was happening. Um, in fact, Twitter clearly must have suppressed that while they were trying to get a handle on it. So um, the, the trends thing is very, very strange indeed. Uh, the, the, tr the trending tab is, is clearly manipulated. And now we can see for ourselves that actually with the flick of a switch, you can be prevented from trending. Um, and therefore, I would imagine it would, ex it, it would extend that they can make things trend if they want to. I, I've said this many times on my uh, podcast and when I've been doing my streams that it, it blows my mind. I wake up every day. And there was some shit hashtag like Trump ha Trump meltdown, Trump wears diapers, Trump is this, Trump is that. And it's just like, there's no way this is legitimately trending every day that there is all like over other happenings that this thing is being tweeted about more than like a, a, a terrorist attack or a mass shooting or whatever it is that gets, you know, like should be dominating a trending tab, whatever the big happening of the day is. Yet there's always room for some pathetic sort of anti-Trump sentiment in a hashtag. Sometimes the same hashtags are recycled and used over and over again. Um, and they, they seem to crop up so repeatedly. So <clears throat> I've always suspected uh, that the trending tab is completely uh, manipulated. And this panel seems to confirm it. So lots to uh, answer for, actually, uh, from Twitter, because they've always maintained that they have a minimalist intervention policy they they try and let the health of the conversation play out as it should this panel now obviously uh shows different um anyway back to the main story over in vice um you can see that these th that uh a, a twitter spokesperson told motherboard as per our rules we're taking action on any private personal information shared in tweets this was their excuse for deleting these screenshots from the uh uh, from the, from their platform. They really wanted to try and keep a lid on this because I just don't think they realized there was no keeping a lid on it because of how, how, how it had transpired and the size and scale of the hack. Um, after the publication of this piece, Twitter said in a tweet, we detected what we believe to be a coordinated social engineering attack by people who successfully targeted some of our employees with access to internal systems and tools. Uh, you can see as well, Mr. Bloomberg uh, was in there. They, they went after other cryptocurrency uh, platforms. Let's just go to the Twitter response. This is what Twitter had to say about it all. Uh, internal, uh, we, we'll go right up to the top. Obviously, there were tweet and a storm about this. We are aware of a security incident. Yep. You may be unable to tweet or reset your password while we review and address this incident. And that actually happened. There was this glorious moment where verified blue checks couldn't tweet. I'm one myself. Trust me, preventing me from tweeting is probably a good idea a lot of the time, like a lot of us, because we interface with social media in a way that's simply not mentally healthy for any of us. But uh, the, 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 the reality was Twitter became a wonderful place for about like an hour or two when none of the verifieds could tweet their nonsense. Um, we're continuing to limit the ability to tweet, reset your password, and some other account functionalities while we look into this. Thanks for your patience. Most accounts should be able to tweet again as we continue working on a fix. This functionality may come and go. We're working to get things back to normal as quickly as possible. Uh, anyway, they this was Twitter in panic mode. They clearly didn't know what was going on. They clearly didn't know the scope of the hack. They clearly shut down all the verifieds, which tells you uh, it, in and of itself, uh, like that they weren't even being entirely honest with this. Uh, uh, pretty much normal non-verified accounts weren't affected. Uh, verified accounts weren't. This this is in relation to how the panel operates. And again, it goes against things that Twitter have publicly said. They say a verification check mark is simply a means to show that the person whose account it is, is, is the verified user. So people can't uh, fake their identity and, and use it for scams and things like that. In actuality, what we know is that a verified check mark gives you a back channel to Twitter in a lot of cases. Uh, it gives you your own support uh, group that you can go out to they have their own verified support channel which uh, is basically clogged up with the whining of verifieds about people saying mean things to them and on top of that now it seems as well that this panel was specifically designed um to um you know focus on 
sizable accounts. So all fine and dandy. It gets to the next day. Uh, it says, uh, our investigation is still ongoing, but here's what we know so far. We detected what we believe to be a coordinated social engineering attack by people who successfully targeted some of our employees with access to internal systems and tools. We know they use this access to take control of many highly visible, including verified accounts to tweet on their behalf. We're looking at what other malicious activity that may have uh, been conducted or information they may have accessed, and we'll share more here as we have it. Once we became aware of the incident, we immediately locked down the affected accounts and removed tweets posted by the attackers. We also limited functionality for a much larger group of accounts, like all verified accounts, even th those with no evidence being compromised, while we fully continue to investigate this. This was disruptive, but it was an important step to reduce risk. Most functionality has been restored, but we may take further actions and we'll update you if we do. Uh, we've locked accounts up compromised and we'll restore access to the original account owner only when we are certain we can do securely. Internally, we've taken significant steps to limit access to internal systems and tools while our investigation is ongoing. More updates to come as our investigation continues. Now, interestingly enough, there were a few other people that uh, that couldn't tweet on their accounts got and got locked out. Donald Trump Jr. was one of them. I think they felt that there may have been uh, some interest in getting into Trump family members accounts and Trump administration accounts. So that's what they uh, that's what they locked down temporarily while all this went on. Now, when you start hearing about how the hack actually happened, it's staggering. It's absolutely mind-blowing because uh, it, initially it was kind of put out there that they just bought an account, uh, this, and then it, it gets worse. Hackers tell the story of the Twitter attack from the inside. Uh, this was two days after the hack, New York Times published the story and it's not a great look it's pretty embarrassing uh, a twitter hacking scheme that targeted political corporate and cultural elites this week began with a teasing message between two hackers late tuesday on the online messaging platform discord you bro wrote a user named kirk according to a screenshot of the conversation sent to the new york times i work at twitter don't show this to anyone seriously he then demonstrated he could take control of valuable Twitter accounts, the sort of thing that would require insider access to the company's computer network. The hacker, who received the message using the, uh, using the screen name LOL, decided over the next 24 hours that Kirk did not actually work for Twitter because he was too willing to damage the company. But Kirk did have access to Twitter's most sensitive tools, which allowed him to take control of almost any Twitter account, including those of former President Barack Obama, uh, uh, Joseph R. Biden Jr., Elon Musk, and uh, many other celebrities celebrities uh anyway down it goes uh we interviewed four people and the interviews indicate that the attack was not the work of a single country like russia because obviously that was the next thing or a sophisticated group of hackers instead it was done by a group of young people one of whom says he lives at home with his mother who got to know one another because of their obsession with owning early or unusual screen names particularly one letter or number like at y or at six the Times verified the four people were connected to the hack by matching their social media and cryptocurrency accounts to accounts that were involved with the events on Wednesday. They also presented corroborating evidence their involvement, like the logs from the conversations on Discord, a messaging platform popular with gamers and hackers and Twitter. Playing a central role in the attack was Kirk, who was taking money in and out of the same Bitcoin address as the, as the day went on, according to an analysis of the Bitcoin transactions by the Times, with assistance from the research firm Chain uh, Chain Analysis. Uh, anyway, we we go on. Uh, I just wanted to tell you my story because I think you might be able to clear some things up about me and and ever so anxious. Lol said in the chat on Discord where he shared all the logs uh, with Kirk and proved his ownership of the cryptocurrency accounts he used it to transact with Kirk. Lol did not confirm his real world identity, but he lived on the West Coast and was in his twenties. Ever so anxious said he was nineteen and lived in the south of England. Uh, with his mother ever so anxious as another user they've all got terrible names uh so this is this is all of the uh discussions and that they were having on discord and w why they connected proof of the panel and basically i'm gonna i'll, I'll, I'll get to the end here uh where you can see uh, Kirk quickly escalated his efforts, posting a message from accounts belonging to celebrities like Kanye West and tech titans like Jeff Bezos. Send Bitcoin to a specific account, your money would be sent back doubled. Uh, Twitter said in a blog post that the attackers had targeted 130 accounts, gaining access and tweeting from 45 of that set. They were able to download data from eight of the accounts the company added. So basically, 
what happened here is a guy met another guy on Discord. The guy was a low-level Twitter employee and could show uh, and, and showed that he had act, could take over any verified account on the platform. And they co co colluded together to do the Bitcoin. But where it gets really interesting is the bit that we came up to down at the bottom. Uh, there was also, by the way, a report circulating that they gained access to the company Slack and there was login data as a pinned tweet in one of the private Slack channels. So Twitter have a whole lot to answer to in terms of just overall security. This is not a sophisticated hack by any means. This is a low-level employee having access to something that clearly internally in the company should not be given across the board blanketly to employees. And on top of that, uh, th these are just a bunch of kids that probably don't even know like where they were headed with it once they got the access. It doesn't look like there was any grand scheme. But as I did say, the Bitcoin aspect of it is uh, um, maybe an afterthought because they actually took time to target 130 Twitter accounts for 45 of those accounts, the attackers were able to initiate a password reset, log into the account, and send tweets. We are continuing our forensic review of all the accounts to confirm all actions that have been taken. In addition, we believe they may have attempted to tell some of the usernames. For up to eight of the Twitter accounts involved, the attackers took the additional step of downloading the account's information through our Your Twitter data tool. This is where it gets interesting because what that tool enables you to do is any phone number that's been attached to the account, any email that's been attached to the account, any IP I think is on there as well. But crucially, it gives you a history, a complete history of all of the direct messages that have been sent. Now, probably that's not really a lot to worry about if it, depending on which eight accounts were targeted we don't know. Twitter won't say, probably never will, and it's only likely to ever come out through vigorous journalism, which doesn't happen anymore, and m maybe uh, a, a, a congressional investigation. So eight Twitter accounts have been targeted. Uh, staggering uh, that, that potentially eight political accounts have had all of their DMs downloaded, maybe business accounts. I mean, if I was Elon Musk, I'd probably be pretty fucking nervous right now because he strikes me as the kind of guy that probably would collude and say crazy shit via Twitter DMs. After all, this is the guy who, apropos of seemingly nothing, called a man trying to save some kids in a cave a pedo on Twitter and, uh, and somehow beat that case. But there you have it. So he doesn't strike me as a particularly measured guy, uh, considering he's meant to be some sort of genius. But it's entirely possible. As you'll know, the Twitter accounts that are run by politicians, they're used by a lot of people. The team uses them. Interns use them. Staffers use them. The politician themselves use them. And we have no idea if anyone's going to have stayed within protocol and maybe not sent some highly compromising DMs. I mean, who knows what a politician might send to another politician because a Twitter DM is quicker than, you know, logging into your phone, going through the security check, sending an email. There could be some something absolutely incredible, some unbelievable smoking gun among that data. And these kids, because they're not um, necessarily, they're, they're not like elite level hackers. They're not you know, they're not attached to any sort of politically motivated group. I mean, who knows where they're going to send this to? They might try and sell it. They might offload it to WikiLeaks. It might have already happened. It might go absolutely nowhere. They might ultimately not be smart enough to really understand what they could potentially have and do nothing with it. I mean, one of the great misconceptions about hacks is that all hackers are smart and they have a game plan. I mean, some of the biggest cybersecurity uh, uh, breaches in, in history are almost like incidental and done by people, uh, sometimes even people who don't comprehend of their actions because of, you know, learning uh, difficulties and stuff like that. So anyway, that is huge. 
that is, that is a huge, huge issue because this now potentially could become a matter of national security. I would argue that if a politician is sending co potentially compromising Twitter DMs, uh, and it's we all know no platform like that is secure. They need to be in investigated and pr appropriate action, appropriate measures taken against them. But for now, let's talk about Twitter and the fact that it turns out that they can just take over an account at will. They can read your DMs at will. I mean, I'm not naive. I knew that anyway. But now that it's like public knowledge and there's a, there's a panel for it and they can manipulate everything, shit, man, it, it's just such a terrible look for Twitter and there's going to be so much to answer for. It looks like the, the start of it is going to be this. This is uh, Josh Hawley. He issued a letter uh, on the day of the hack, basically saying he wants to get Jack Dorsey in front of Congress again, and he's going to have to answer some vitally important questions. As you can see here, he says, did this event represent a breach of users' own account security or of Twitter systems? W were accounts protected by two-factor authentication successfully targeted in this breach? Yes, they were. And if so, how was this possible? Did this breach compromise the account security of users whose accounts were not used to share fraudulent posts? If so, how many accounts are affected we we know that now although the numbers are probably a lie i mean i wouldn't trust anything twitter says frankly uh how many users may have faced data theft as a consequence of this breach what measures does twitter undertake to prevent system level hacks from breaching the security of its entire uh, entire user base and did this attack threaten the security of the president's own twitter account incidentally as well as i think it was in the vice report it did show that, yes, they did try and gain access to Donald Trump, but because he'd been subject to an earlier attempt in 2017, he actually had uh, extra protections in place for his account, and they weren't able to gain access. I mean, that could have been an absolute fucking shitstorm. Who knows? But that there you have it. I mean, this 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 is a story that it's kind of faded out pretty quickly. Uh, I guess with everything that's going on in the world, maybe that makes sense. But this is a big deal, and those DMs, we need to find out where they're going, what's in them. This could be a story that could potentially end up like the WikiLeaks drop, and could keep going and going and going, depending on who has access to that information and what that information actually is. Uh, either way, Twitter it up shit creek without a paddle. And uh, probably are going to have a lot of uncomfortable questions to answer uh, before Congress. Not that Congress ever do anything to these people when they fuck up. I mean, big tech seems to just be able to get away with absolutely anything these days. But that's a topic for another video. So anyway, there you go. That's everything you need to know about the Twitter hack. You should be up to speed with that now. And uh, I'll bring you more coverage on that once it does get to the congressional hearings and investigations. And indeed, if any of those DMs turn up, which I got a gut feeling that they might, but we'll have to wait and see. As always, uh, thanks so much for the support on the channel. Slowly and surely, we are building up equipments coming in. Sounds getting better. You know, lighting's getting better. Uh, in the middle of August, I'm going to be back to a studio setup. But for now, we'll just plow through like this. Thanks so much. Make sure you put a comment in for the algorithm gods. Make sure you you haven't been unsubscribed. Maybe tell a friend to subscribe. Let's keep the growth going. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Much love to you all.